It's done. I edited about one hour of footage down to four minutes, so we will have to be quick. So, the spindle assembly is sliding rather nicely. It's very good idea to have a long flat reference, because these rods are anything but flat. I don't have any and I managed to make it work, so it's not a really big deal if you don't have one. But you cannot be sure that the, the rail is really flat. In the rails I have countersunk holes for Allen key screws. In the baseboard there are oversized holes and the screws are fixed by nuts. This way you can force the rail to be somewhat straight. To make these two rails parallel I used just a caliper to measure the distance between each other. But it's a really good idea to have some spacer. In this shot you can see that each rod is made by different process. The left one is quite smaller, but I decided to use it anyway. For example, this sliding block is really tight on the right rail, but on the left rail it's very very loose. Also you may notice that I am using shims on top of the sliding blocks. Actually on top of each one sliding block there is a piece of paper. So all four are equally shimmed. And without that it does not work. And I don't really know why. The play you can see here in the top to down direction is about 0.1 mm. I have a timing belt and I am thinking about using that for actuation. So I am measuring what size of pulley I can get there. After measuring the proper size, I printed out some template for the pulley. There's an online application made by Matthias Vandel, that's a fellow YouTuber here, so you can check him out. Also, I will provide a link in the description. I cut the pulley prototype from uh, rubber, just to check the timing. Next, I drilled the holes as precisely as I could in the sliding blocks. And all that effort for nothing. Never mind. So I made another pulley from Teflon. That seems to work really well. It's a little bit noisy, but this is because I'm not using bearings. Actually, right now I cannot tell what contribution does the absence of bearings have on display. Okay, so let's carry on. I got this condenser here just to measure its diameter. Because this will be about the diameter that I will want to process on this lathe. I changed my mind and I decided to use 40mm hole bearings instead of 20mm ones. But even then, this condenser will be a little bit too large. Also, I ordered some copper for the motors, and this one's pull here will be for two phases. So basically, I want to use two direct drive, three phase motors. And I guess that I will spend some time on programming the PID loop for them. Well, this paper is representing the footprint of the bearings that I will use. I am marking the space they will occupy, just to see how much space there will be left for the stator. Well, there will be plenty. To conclude this, I am pretty happy with mechanical properties of these rails. I will have to think a little bit more about actuation mechanism. But other than that, no problems. Yeah, so thanks for watching, bye.